Will Smith, you see my thumbnail? Christo No Balls. You know what, though? That's I, I actually think that's the wrong title. I know. It should be Christo No Don't No Ball. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. So when that thing's going on, and I will give myself credit because I am not Monday morning quarterback, I was telling Portsy the play before, I said, we should be in victory formation. We are playing with fire. You know, and when it happened, now, look, a lot of Miami fans are now putting up the thumbnail and the replay of Don Chaney. I think there's clear evidence that he was down. It should not have been a fumble. However, and this is where I, I Miami fans need to understand one thing. You are focusing too much on the result. The process was flawed. And and I don't, I, that cannot be a crutch because that never should have been in that position Don Chaney should have never been given the football. Th that was a dereliction of duty. And I'm hearing all sorts of different theories as to what happened. There's one theory that the staff wanted Don Chaney to get 100 yards. Okay, let me address that. Number one, so getting 100 yards in the fifth game of the season against Georgia Tech, is that some sort of milestone? Does he win a new car? I mean, is it about one individual achievement or winning the game? I, I, I don't understand that. And by the way, Don Chaney's a very talented running back. He has a chance to play at the next level, but he's been injury prone. So my argument is don't give him any more carries when you don't need to. That, that, that to me is illogical. Number two, there's this people that believe, well, Mario just wanted to get out of the way of his offensive coordinator because he's got this reputation of meddling too much. So he wanted to empower the guy. I say, hold on. If he's allowing your coordinators, both of them, to call the game, it is still his job as a head coach two or three times a game to say, hey, guys, we're going for it here, or we're going to punt or temple, or victory formation, take a knee, wrap it up. That's his job. That That is completely on Mario. So, look, I'm not – I – I'm not calling for the firing of Mario Cristobal or I think he's on the hot seat. I'm still very much a supporter of his. I'm a fan of his, but there is an issue with him. The reputation is he's a great program leader, builder, recruiter. He recruits a strong culture and will maintain that. But there's been a rap and you can ask a lot of Oregon fans. His game and clock management leaves a lot to be desired. And here's what I find egregious, guys. Five years ago, in a similar situation, instead of taking a knee, he handed the ball off, fumble, Stanford came back, got it to overtime, and lost. Stanford game. You should allow that to happen one time in your coaching career, and then you learn for it. This is his 13th year as a head coach at the division one level. And I will argue with anybody as someone that still very much supports and likes and admires Mario Cristobal. We were not asking you to be Bill Belichick with Tom Brady, Tom Landry, Jimmy Johnson, or Bill Walsh. We were asking you to make a decision coach agree or disagree that 99.999% of other coaches going up from pop Warner football would have made. Is that fair to say, Coach? Yeah, I had this talk with Weddle yesterday, and he asked specifically positionally who would who would you stay away from if hiring as an AD. If I was Miami's AD, the first guy that I don't – here's Eric Weddle in the chat right now. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. Um, I would never hire an O-line coach as a head coach, ever. But isn't ever. Andy Reid an O-line coach, though, at heart? Uh, yeah, he's the GA as an old tackle tight ends guy. He, he got right into quarterback in OC and at San Francisco State in 86. He he was an O-line player. Okay. He never really dived into the well, O-line coach. coach. Like Maybe, Eric Bell said, something that's ironic? When I think of Andy Reid, I don't think O-line guy. I think right. OC. Fair enough. But can I tell you something that's interesting? There's footage where a particular coach was actually telling our two guys, Shannon Dawson and Mark, hey, we should be taking a knee. Uh, uh, we should be taking we're about to pull it up. I think we have it. And uh, you know who that is? Oh. That guy right there that we're going to pull up is Alex Mirabal, great offensive line coach. So mm. now I'm thinking you need to be the clock management coordinator. People have to understand. And, and I wrote an article on this for Kane's Insight called This Is On You, Mario Cristobal. I wrote a lengthy tweet. Uh, here's the thing that gets me. Um, people do not understand what clock management is. Clock management is understanding when time is more important than yards. 
Okay, so let me get let me go back here. The genesis of the victory formation, in my view, began, I believe, in 1978 with the miracle at the Meadowlands, where Joe Pisarczyk kind of gave the ball to Larry Zonka, except Larry Zonka didn't realize he was supposed to get the ball. Herman Edwards picks up the ball, runs it in. The coach for the Giants happened to be, I believe, Sean McVay's grandfather, John McVay. Yep. He got fired immediately after the game. Now, Mario's not going to get fired because it's too young. I don't think it's deserved. It's still rebuilt, Steve. It's still rebuilt. Right, and but that you're right. But teams and football started to figure out if we're in that position, why even hand the ball off? Just take a knee. Now, let me give you another example. And I, again, I was not Monday morning quarterback. And do you remember two years ago in Auburn? I think in Brian Harson's first year had Alabama dead to rights. They had the ball with about a minute to go. They're up by a touchdown. And they're trying to run out the clock right around midfield. And I remember thinking, start taking knees. Even if you don't get the first down, squeeze the clock. So they give the ball to Tank Bigsby. And Bigsby bounces the ball outside. And I'm thinking, "Uh uh-oh, you better start sliding, brother. He ran out of bounds. Guess what happened? They punted the ball. And Bryce Young led like a 95-yard drive. Mm. Now, if you just would have taken a knee or do a, a quarterback sneak, they don't. They have about 15 seconds. And I don't blame the young man. Tank Bigsby is a young player who does not know any better. The adult had to say, hey, hey, asshole, I'm going to tell you this right now. We're taking a knee or we're going to plunge inside. That's what you're going to do because time is more valuable than yards at time. Yeah. And I look, the, the thing is with Mario, he has to become a better coach from this. Now, I found this interesting, guys. Yesterday at the press conference, his weekly coaches press conference, our athletic director, Dan Radakovich, was there. I talked to some people and I said, why do you think he was there that week? The word that I got was is to make sure that Mario said the right things. You are not going to argue with the media. You're not going to make excuses. You're going to say this is on me. Mm. You are the leader. But the next time we're in that position, Mario Cristobal needs to say, okay, guys, we're taking a knee. If you disagree, pack your shit up. Get out of here. And this is the this, video. This is oh, knee this territory. Is video. I'm not right. sure. Oh, my God. Look at this. I mean, you can take a knee. So <laughs> you're, saying he tell, you're saying he tells him to do it right here? Yeah, the little guy right there, the, the small guy that was on the beginning of the screen, that is Alex uh, Mirabel. Yeah, yeah. And Orange. he tells him, guys, uh, knee, right, uh, is that him? No, that's not him, but the, Alex Mirabal was in the beginning of that clip. People have frozen, right there, the guy in the white hat. That's Alex Mirabal. Oh, that's on the far there. left, got yes. you. Right here. Yep, far left. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't I don't oh, understand man. it at all. I, well, I, I don't, I, like you said earlier, Steve, 99.9999% of the, of the world would have taken a knee in that situation. The game is literally over. I don't, I. I get he was down. He was down. Doesn't that, even matter now. But as a head coach, you don't put your team even in that position in the first place. Darnell, I've heard people say, "Well, well, Don Chaney's never fumbled, so there's like less than a one percent of him fumbling." And I say, "You're right. You know, it's even less than a, a percentage of f- giving the ball back, taking a knee." Right. As a coach, your job is to play percentages and mitigate risk. Now, I, I'm going to tell the whole story here. We have to be fair defensively. What I did not understand was the way we played defensively. And I like our coordinator, Lance Guidry. Um, But there were some player errors that go beyond coaching. To Corey Couch, he's got to show better ball skills. That that second pass before the game-winning touchdown should have been intercepted. Mistimed his jump. Now, the game-winning touchdown, two things happened that, again, should be in every coaching clinic. The defensive end lost contain. Yeah. You got to keep that guy in the pocket. So Haynes King does a good job of thinking out of the pocket. Now, the All-American cornerback, or excuse me, the All-American free safety, Cam Kitchens, tries to basically jump an in-cutting route. Hold on. A field goal only ties the game. Mm. There's a chance that if you give up a dig route, if you tackle the guy and jostle him, the clock may have ran out. Right. Why are you playing hero ball? And what is the – Coach JB, am I right or wrong? The general rule for any safety play, you're always the deeper than the deepest man, right? 
Yeah, that was an escape drill play. Uh, Weddle's in the chat. Weddle, you hear, you see that you saw the safety for Miami. Um, basically, you're the deep third guy, and that Eric, don't watch it; it'll ruin your day. You'll throw up. No, he, he wanna... did it that night. I think he saw it. He and let me just tell you this to all the Miami fans that always argue: uh, the Mount Rushmore of Miami safeties, in my view, is very simple. It's Daryl Williams, Ed Reed, Sean Taylor, Benny Blades, and everyone was coming at me. Hey, what if Camp Kitchens wins two time All American? I'd say, yeah, he's probably maybe the fifth or sixth best safety. He's not better than he'll never get the sh place of Daryl Williams, who I believe was the best pure football player on that 1991 championship team. First round draft choice had about a 10 year career. Excellent football player. The mark of a great safety like Daryl Williams. I never saw anyone ever get behind Daryl Williams. And here's the other thing. Cam. Again, I'm going to ask, was that about you or the team? Why are you jumping that route? The worst case scenario should have been they catch the pass and they have to run the field goal unit in. You, you That was a selfish football play. And quite frankly, that happened to him a few times last year. He's trying to be Ed Reed and gamble. I, I, don't watch Miami a few times. I don't watch Miami like you, so you know this kid's done it multiple times. I If I was watching it as a, as a first-timer, I said, this is a kid. He made a damn horrible mistake because he came down here on the QB. If you're saying he's done it multiple times, then 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 maybe you have a little bit of a headhunter issue back there, which probably shouldn't be playing free. He should probably be playing strong. Well, there's a difference. So. Coach, you also made a great point when we were there together. You said, Steve, what is he doing? That, that guy's not running 55 yards for a touchdown. That's the thing that's that's, <laughs> that's what that's, that, that's not like Cam. Cam is an excellent young man, he's a really good football player. But right there, I, I said Daryl Williams would have never done that. <laughs> it's just, that that's the know, first thing that struck me. The quarterback's not scoring from 55 yards out, so why are you coming up to him from 30 yards deep? That's what the first thing that struck and the me. other thing is the clock stopped when Devin Leary caught the touchdown with two seconds. Maybe you actually want the quarterback to run, the clock may have ran out. I, that's what I would have been saying. That's why I'd be able to play. Right. So, and people ask, like, Steve, are you angry? Eh, I'm not happy about it. I'm not going to jump off a bridge. I mean, I'm, we're still going to watch the games. And the unfortunate thing is, you know, the way the game is, Darnell, as a player and JB, especially you as a coach more recently, isn't this the type of loss that sticks with you and can actually affect you for the next game or three? Because I've seen this before, right? Yeah. A hundred percent. That was going to be like, honestly, my next question to you. I don't know if you, if you had heard some, any, you know, you know, any insight from the locker room, but this is definitely a loss that can, that can hunt you. You know, they always say, all right, you, you know, win or lose on to the next, but a loss like this, when you had it right there, those players are, are definitely behind the scenes on that bus, on that plane or whatever, after the game in the, in the dorm, they're talking like, what the hell was coach doing? Like, why do we run it? Why do we, because now you're, you're losing some trust from your players yes. in your locker room. And that leads to players freestyling, doing things on the field that, that are, that are not, you know, what the, what they were coached up to do. And that can definitely lead to other issues. And you notice even right now, how, because of this one bad decision, how now we're, we're, we're pointing the blame at just, well, I mean, the safety shouldn't have did this. Well, shoot, the running back shouldn't have. Well, if, if Mario Cristobal would have yeah, put his foot none down, of that happens. Knee, none of this happens. None of this happens. <laughs> yeah. None of this happens. So the next time Miami's in that situation, I need Cristobal to say, Kaepernick formation! Kaepernick, we're going to kneel! That's it. No argument, bro. Cap, hey, cap, 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 cap. You know, I have a big blue cap in those cards. <laughs> You know, hey, hey, Steve is crazy, man. Back, back to our first point, like Steve said, like Weddle said, I can handle what I said earlier, the kid making that mistake coming downhill. But Cristobal, that's just not an acceptable thing. And like, you get it, paid eight and a half million dollars. And, and a coach, you could talk about this more than I can. I get it. Certain head coaches are delegators and they're CEO types that that allow a coordinator on both sides to call the game. But there are times, I believe, once or twice a half, or depending on the game flow, hey, guys, I got two timeouts. Look to me because I might go quick tempo. Or, Coach, haven't you ever told a coordinator, hey, you better give me three runs here or just turn in your headset. That's what we're doing. We're going to grind the clock. Isn't it really that simple? Mm. Executive decisions, that's what you're there for? 
That, I, th- I think he's arguing with TikTok. Hey, Big, uh, no, no, no. Hey, Steve. Um, I got I got this fucking guy outside my house jackhammering something, and I don't know who it is. Not at my house, but it's so loud. Um, Steve, let me ask you something real quick. This whole Miami debacle and all that. I don't know how good they were. You've watched them much more than me. They beat an AM team who Alabama just struggled with, uh, obviously. But I'm trying to figure out who they still have left on the schedule. They play Florida State? They play Florida State, they play Louisville, and they play North Carolina. So there's some real football games. And I I, I look, this is a shame. They should be five and zero. Oh. I don't know what's going to happen in Carolina because they have to go to Chapel Hill, a place that they have not done very well. And Drake May probably had his best game last week. Yeah. It's going to be a real challenge. Got his receiver I, back, Tez no, Walker. He's yeah, Tez Walker is back. Nate McCollum's a good little slot receiver. They have two productive pass-catching tight ends, uh, Kamari Morales and Nesbitt. And they have a little bowling ball at running back, Omari and Hampton. And defensively, mm. look, they gave South Carolina fits. They had like nine sacks. This is a game that was going to be tough regardless. It's a prime time game. And now you're walking in with, look, you could talk about the team's going to be angry. They're going to have a chip on the shoulder. That's an assumption. That's a hope. We really don't know. This goes, I remember way back. This was in 1999. Miami loses this heartbreaking game to Penn State. Chafee Field breaks our heart. Late touchdown. Miami should have won that game, but they blow it. Miami couldn't win a game for three, four weeks. You mm. could tell they were in a funk because they gave up something late. It was more than just a loss. And it, it, it harkens back to my comparison. Mario Cristobal is a lot like Butch Davis. They can recruit, they can evaluate, and they can build. It's that game day management where they, they need some help. They need some help. And, I, look, I'm still firmly behind Cristobal. He's our coach. He's going to work his ass off. But there needs to be honest discussions and some really some soul-searching from Cristobal. You need yeah. to be better. You failed the team. I And I don't say that with any malice. <laughs> That's just a fact. Well, a great yeah. coach can win or, win or lose a game once in a while that you're not supposed to or that one that hangs in the balance. A bad one loses it. I mean, Darnell, did you know that the win probability before that play for Miami was 99.9%? I was actually told that the other coach, he actually took off his headset. Of course he did. Fans left the game. People, people yeah. turned the TV off and changed the channel. We thought it was curtains. 